Hey guys, we are continuing solving problems from Fundamentals of Physics by Hilary Resnick Walker. Eighth edition is what we are doing. Uh, chapter 21, Electric Charge. We are doing problems based on Coulomb's Law. And in this session, we will be doing problem number 9. Let me read out the problem. <clears throat> In figure, the particles have charges Q1 equal to minus Q2 equal to 100 nanocoulomb and Q3 equal to minus Q4 equal to 200 nanocoulomb and distance A equal to 5 centimeters. What are the X and Y components of the net electrostatic force on particle 3? See, this is the same problem we, uh, this is the same diagram we did it in the previous session. Previous question was also about, previous problem was also about the same uh, diagram. So we have these four charged particles at the corners of a square with side length A. This being the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Charges are given Q1 is equal to 100 nanocoulomb minus Q2 is equal to 100 nanocoulomb. That means uh, Q2 is equal to minus 100 nanocoulomb. Q3 is equal to 200 nanocoulomb and minus Q4 is equal to 200 nanocoulomb. That means Q4 is equal to minus 200 nanocoulomb. And A is equal to 5 centimeter. 5 centimeter means 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters. Conversion from centimeter to meter. Remember nano means 10 to the power minus 9. Yes, minus 9. We had to find out X component of the net force on particle 3 and Y component of the net force on particle 3. Particle 3 will experience three forces. One from particle 1, the other from particle 2 and the third one from particle 4. Okay, so three forces. Then we have to find out X component of the net force and Y component of the net force. So uh, 1 is positive plus 100 nanocoulombs. And 3 is also positive. So 1 is positive. I'll mark it here. 1 is positive and 3 is also positive. Uh, 2 and 4 are negative. 2 is uh, negative and 4 is also negative. Particle 1 exerts a repulsive force. Both of them are positive. Okay, Both of them are positive. So particle 1 exerts repulsive force which is here. I'll call this F1. You can see that's already in the negative direction of Y axis. So we don't need to resolve that. That only has Y component, which is in the negative direction of Y axis. Particle 2 will exert a force of force along the diagonal. Attractive force. Okay. So particle 2 will exert a force which is attractive. F2, I'll call that. Force from particle 2. And uh, we can resolve that force. This is X component of that force, F2X, in the positive direction of X axis. And this is Y component of that force, F2Y. Then particle 4, okay, one more thing about particle 2, a uh, force from particle 2. This force is along the diagonal of the square. So this angle must be 45 degrees. 45 degrees is special because at 45 degrees, X component and Y components are same. Cos 45 and sin 45, both of them are 1 by root 2. So X component is same as Y component. Okay, then uh, 4 will exert again uh, an attractive force. This is negative. That one is positive. So that force will be like this. I'll call this F4, force from particle 4. Again, this is already along X axis, so we don't have to resolve this. It ha only has X component. So along X axis, we have two forces. And along Y axis, we have two forces. Now we have to find out magnitudes of the three forces. Then we'll see what is the total force along X axis and total force along Y axis. So we'll start with F1. F1 is between 1 and 3. Okay, F1 is between 1 and 3. So F1, F1 is equal to gamma Q1 Q3 divided by A squared. Remember distance between them is A. 
Q1 is 100 nanocoulomb and Q3 is 200 nanocoulomb. Q is 9 into 10 to the gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Q1 is 100 nanocoulomb means 100 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb. And uh, Q3 is 200 Q3 is 200 nanocoulomb, so 200 into 10 to the power minus 9. Divided by A squared, A is 5 centimeters, so 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters with the square. Now this thing I have already worked out, F1 is equal to, F1 is 0 0.072, 0 0.072 newtons. Now, this is only the magnitude of F1. If we take direction into account, direction of F1 is in the negative direction of y axis. So, we'll have to introduce minus sign. Okay. So, that we'll do later on. Magnitude is enough this time. So, magnitude is 0.072 newtons. Now, I'll uh, find F4 first. F4 is force between 3 and 4. Okay. 3 and 4. So now F4 is gamma Q3 Q4 divided by A squared. Again, distance is A. Gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 into Q3. Now Q3 and Q4. Q3 is 200 nanocoulombs and Q4 is minus 200 nanocoulombs. But we have to uh, take only the value. We are only finding the magnitude of the force. So 200 and 200 nanocoulombs each. 200 nanocoulomb, nano is 10 to the power minus 9 into 200 into 10 to the power minus 9. We are only finding the magnitude of F4, so we are only taking Q3 and Q4, uh, magnitude of Q3 and Q4 without their signs, without the minus sign. A is again 5 into 10 to the power minus 2, 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 with the square. So this implies F4 is equal to, now this thing I have worked out already, F4 comes out to be 0 0.144 Newtons. Okay, 0 0.144 Newtons. Again, F4 is along x-axis, so we don't have to resolve this. F1 is along y-axis, so we don't have to resolve this. Now we'll find out F2. F2 is force between 2 and 3. Okay. And what is distance between them? Distance between them is the diagonal length. And diagonal length for the square is root 2 times side A. We used it in the previous problem also. Root 2 times A. So force between 2 and 3. Force between 2 and 3. F2 is gamma Q2 Q3 divided by root 2a squared. Remember distance between them is root 2a. Gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Q2. Q2, Q2 is minus 100 nanocoulomb, but we are only finding the magnitude. So we will only take the value without the minus sign. We will take 100 nanocoulombs and Q3 is 200 nanocoulombs. So 100 and 200. So 200 into 10 to the power minus 9 and the other one is 100 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by root 2 square is just 2 then into a is 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 with the square. So this implies F2 is equal to now solving this we find F2 is equal to 0 0.036. 0.036 newtons. Okay. Now the components. Again, F2 is at an angle of 45 degrees. So it's X component and Y components are same. Okay. Because cos 45 and sin 45, both are 1 by root 2. So uh, F2X and F2Y, the components, now F2x is same as F2y is equal to F2 into sine 45 or cos 45 which is 1 divided by root 2. 
and f2 is 0 0.036 into 1 divided by root 2. Now this thing is this thing is uh, 0 0.02 0 0.0255 newtons. Okay. So x component of force 2 and y component of force 2 both are 0 0.0255 newtons. Now we have to consider total force along x axis and total force along y axis. Now, total force along x-axis, which is simply x component of the net force, is sum of these two forces, F4 plus F2x, okay, F4 plus F2x. Now, net force, x component, Fx is equal to F4 plus F2x f4 f4 is 0 0.144 newtons 0 0.144 newtons plus f2x is 0 0.0255 newtons so this implies fx is equal to 0 0.17 it is in the positive direction of x axis, so I will mention the positive sign. So, x component of the total force on particle 3 is 0 point plus 0 0.17 newtons plus tells you it is in the positive direction of x axis. Now, the y component. Y component of the total force. Now, let us look at the diagram. Total force along y axis. We have two forces along y axis. One is here F2y, the other is here F1. F2y is in positive direction and F1 is in negative direction. So we'll take this with positive sign and this one with negative sign. The total force along y axis will be F2y minus F1. F2y minus F1. F2y minus F1. Okay. So, F2y is F2y is 0 0.0255, 0 0.0255 minus F1, where is that, 0 0.072, 0 0.072, 0 0.072. So, this implies Fy is equal to minus 0 0.047 newtons so this is the x component of the total force on particle 3 and this is the y component of the total force on particle 3 so that's what we were asked to find out in this problem okay